Hello everybody, welcome to the Father Chai's Baseball League. Do not forget to press that like button, subscribe if you are new, plenty more of this and other content coming your way on the channel. But here we are in the April episode of the FCBL, and the Pittsburgh Pirates in for a divisional series against the Cincinnati Reds. We're going to take a look at the first game of that series, which is Jameson Tayon on the mound for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And for the Cincinnati Reds, Luis Castillo, two young arms for these NL Central teams. Talion right away in the first inning going to give up a single down the left field line. That's going to put Mookie Betts on first base. So then with an out later on, Joey Votto in the third hole going to hit the two-run shot in the first inning. It is over the wall. And that's going to give the Reds a 2-0 lead. Then, of course, the strikeout. They're going to get Talion out of there, but two runs off, two hits. Here's Castillo. Castillo gets the strikeout to end his first inning. And he's got a no-hitter going through one. Not that tough to do, but he has it going. And then here's a nice little hit, and that's going to get free from Justin Turner. And it's going to end up being a base hit. So, man on first. Here's a full count, and Talion going to walk him. That's going to put two on with one out. Then they're going to try here for the bunt. Down the line, thrown really quick to first. Moves the runners over to third and second. And two outs here. Talion going to get the easy pop fly into shallow left field. And that will get him out of the second inning. Moving to the bottom half of the second inning. A walk there by Castillo going to put one on with no outs. He's going to put two on with no outs with another walk. And then here is Josh Bell, and he is going to rip one out to center field. That's going to come off the wall, and that is going to load the bases. Loading the bases in next batter, Corey Dickerson, going to lift this one into left field, and that's going to get caught. They will not test the arm in the outfield. But here we go on a one-two pitch with one out. It's going to be lifted into right field. They will also not test him. So Pittsburgh very conservative here in the second inning. Then this one off his hands is going to be caught. Pittsburgh ends up scoring nothing out of a really good situation. So now the Reds in the top of the third inning. That's going to be a walk. That's going to put a guy on right away. Now on a 3-2 count, another walk. Talion walking the first two batters with no outs. Then this one is going to go for a beautiful double play. But there will be a man in easy scoring position on third. 2-2 two and two pitch is a strikeout, and Talion gets himself out of that. So now bottom three for Castillo. Castillo going to give up a big fly here and that is going to come off the wall easy double and that's going to set up Pittsburgh here with some trouble on second next batter is going to be walk there is two outs with one guy on second now and there is the rip into left field and he's going to come around third they don't believe these guys have the arms now after seeing them the first time and he will score that and cut the lead in half, 2-1. However, next batter will be struck out. And we got a 2-1 two, two ball game. So now Talion taking the mound, and that one cannot be stopped by the second baseman. So first, we got a man on first with the pitcher, Luis Castillo, coming up. And he's going to put one down the right field line. Beautiful little base knock into right. And that's going to put two on with two out. A little trouble here with Mookie Betts. And Mookie, he's going to put one into right field. It's not going to get caught. And that's going to score a run. We got runners on the corners. It's 3-1. to one. And this one is going to get hit right at short, and that one will be caught for the final out of that inning. So now we go to the bottom of the fourth. And this one going to get hit up the middle, and the Pirates got another base runner. They need to stop stranding their base runners. Let's see if that'll happen here. Here's a rip, and that one is going to go for a double play. That gets the Reds out of that inning. And that would be the end of four. Now we go top five. 
And this one coming off the hands. And it is going out there. It will be caught by Mike Trout out in center field. And that would end the top of the fifth here. The bottom of the fifth, a strikeout ends that. Keon Kayla coming in for James Italian now. He is 1-0. He's pitched five innings in five games. We'll see how he does here in this one. He starts out with a full count, and he will walk the first batter he comes up to face. Now on a 1-2 pitch, he's going to throw a ball. That one's going to get away, and wild pitch. Runner goes to second, and then he's going to walk the batter. So two on with one out. They're going to bunt here for a sacrifice, and they don't get anyone out. What a mishap. So now base is loaded with one out, and Mookie Betts is going to hit this thing out into right center field. It's going to be uh, Trout making the run and catch, or off the wall that is, and it is going to be another run for the Cincinnati Reds. Runners on the corners, and that one goes down the line. They're going to say that one landed in. I'm not quite sure there, but... They do say it landed in, and now Votto is up, and they are going to intentionally walk him here. They want no part of Joey Votto. So they're going to load the bases up with two outs, and here's the 3-1 pitch, and that one's going to be dribbled over to second base and taken care of. But the Reds do some more damage. It's 5-1. to one. Clay Holmes coming into the game for Pittsburgh. He's pitched one inning total this year. He's not given up anything. Not a hit, not a run, hasn't had a strikeout, but there's a hit right there, and that's going to be a man on first. Later on, he's on second after a uh, ground out moves the runner over, a fielder's choice, and here's a hit out into left field. He's going to turn the corner, and he is going to score, and that's going to put 6-1 to one in favor of the Reds. And this one going to get ripped out there to right, and that's going to fall for a base hit. The throw goes over the second baseman's head, but luckily the third baseman backs him up. And then here's another one down the line, and that one was clearly fair. That's going to bring in more runs for Cincinnati, and the game has just blown wide open. Francisco Liriano trotting into this game now. He has pitched in three games. He's only pitched a total of an inning. And he is 0-1 already on this young season. So here's Liriano. And he's going to throw. That one's going to be grounded to second and easily taken care of over to Josh Bell at first. But again, damage has been done. It is 8-1. The Pirates, there we go, struck out. That ends the seventh. Richard Rodriguez coming into the game. He's pitched an inning per game. His ERA is 3 with five strikeouts, lefties are crushing him this year in this young, young season. Let's see what happens. Here's a hit right there down the right field line. That is fair, and that is going to be a single to start off the Reds here in the top of the eighth. Now on a 3-1 pitch, it's going to be hit into right field, and that's another single for the Cincinnati Reds. Now this one here's this one can't be handled by the pitcher. It's going to be runners on the corners. And then this one right here, again, not handled very well by the pitcher, and that's going to score a run. Nobody out on that play. With two on, there's the strikeout, and that would do it for that half inning. We go to the ninth inning. The Reds are up again. And this nice play right there at second is taken care of. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Last chance for the Pittsburgh Pirates. They have two on, but grounder over to first. And that is going to do it. The Cincinnati Reds win big here in Pittsburgh. 9-1. to one. Luis Castillo, your player of the game. Six innings pitch, six strikeouts. Gives up four hits, one earned run. Mookie Betts goes four for three in this game. Three for three for Tucker Barnhart. Castillo with the win. Over there in Pittsburgh, nobody had more than one hit in this game. Turner had 
an RBI. Jameson Tallion goes five innings, gives up three runs, three walks, five strikeouts. Not his best performance, clearly. And that's going to do it for game one of FCBL. So now we are moving on. We're taking a look at this Indians-Tigers series. And we've got an interesting pitching matchup. And Corey Kluber for the Indians taking on Michael Fulmer for the Detroit Tigers. You see the lineups there. Cleveland coming into Comerica Park at 8-2. and two. The Tigers are 5-6 and six playing hosts today. And there is Corey Kluber. He is ready to go. Let's see. Michael Fulmer will take the mound first. And on the 3-2 pitch, it's going to be Kipnis hitting this thing into the left field corner. And he's going to get a double out of it. Very nice piece of hitting by Jason Kipnis. Now Aaron Judge coming up. As the next batter trying to bring in Kipnis, and he hits one near the same exact spot. And Kipnis will turn around third base and go home. So two straight doubles there will give the Indians a 1-0 lead. Here on a full count is a strikeout, and that will get Fulmer out of the first inning, only giving up one run. We go to the top of the fourth now, and that is a nice liner getting Fulmer out of some more trouble. So it is still 1-0. Here is Castellanos, and he is going to rip one over to left field. That one will be a double. Comes off the foul pole and thrown into second. So a double there. A walk on the next batter is going to put two on with one out, and there's a ripper into right field. They will not test Aaron Judge's arm, so they will wait. This is... Jordy Mercer, or Jody Mercer, and he is up. He is going to hit this thing down the right field line. That is going to bring home a run for the Tigers. Two runs for the Tigers. It is two to one. And now here's a hit out to right field. Judge will make the catch. Nobody will test his arm. And now next batter. Still with runners on the corners, two outs, and Judge is there to get this pop fly as well. But it's all not done before the Tigers take a 2-1 lead here. Nick Whitgren coming into the game. He was traded to the Tigers from the Indians for Shane Green. So here he is, and there's a nice strikeout by Whitgren. They will then bring in Daniel Stumpf. Daniel Stumpf with a 12.79 ERA so far this season. Not great numbers from him. Then they will bring in Joe Jimenez. So a lot of pitching changes going on here for the Tigers, but they haven't given up those runs yet. There's a guy on first base, and here he is, Carlos Santana. He's going to dribble this thing at the pitcher. That's going to be an out. It's going to move the runner over. Now he's on third base for Tyler Naquin, and Naquin right at the shortstop, and he can't handle it. Naquin will get the RBI to tie the ball game. Danny Salazar, former starting pitcher, is going to come in and in relief. Here he is in the bottom of the eighth inning, and there is a deep fly ball to the right that will take be taken care of by Aaron Judge and end the eighth inning. Buck Farmer coming in to pitch in the ninth inning with a 2.25 ERA and he gets a nice strikeout there to end his half of the ninth. Salazar still in there in the ninth for the Indians and that's gonna be a base knock. There's gonna be two on with two out. Runner in scoring position, the Tigers can win this thing with a hit and that's gonna be a strikeout by Salazar. We go to the 10th. 10th inning. There's a nice hit up the middle. And that's going to set up the Indians here. One on, one out. It's Carlos Santana. He's ripped one into right field. It's back, 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 back. Jumping and not getting it. It's a home run for Carlos Santana. And then the Tigers will bring in Reed Garrett. Reed Garrett has pitched in one game. He's only pitched a tenth of an inning so far this season, so a fresh arm, and he gets the strikeout to end the, the top half of the tenth inning. Shane Green comes in, the man that was traded for Nick Whitgren, and 
Nice strikeout to get the first out right there. And then he's going to get a fly ball into center field. And that one will be tracked down and caught out in center. And then this one right here lined right at first base. And Carlos Santana, the man who hit the homer to win the game, has caught the play defensively to secure the win. Jose Ramirez gets player of the game. I don't agree with it, but he hit a double and a single. He was two for three. Salazar did a nice job on the mound. Lindor stunk. He went 0 for 5 today. Santana did a fantastic job. He's hit his second home run of the season. Two RBIs today. Kluber did a fine job. Looking over at the Tigers, Mercer with the only two RBIs for Detroit. Fulmer pitched very well. Six innings, only one earned run. And that's going to take care of that. So now what we'll do is we'll go through the rest of the teams, do a little simulation with each one so you guys can see how the simulation is going. Seattle looking to win a lot of games so far. They're looking really nice. There's the Mets. Here's the Phillies. They're not looking so hot. Getting a lot of losses. The Reds. They're hovering around 500. Pirates. They're doing the same. A lot of 500 hovering going on. Arizona's below. Padres a little above. Looking at the injury list, no one hurt in the entire league. How amazing is that? And it's not because injuries are off. They are on but nobody at all is hurt. Okay, so we'll move into looking at the standings. The Yankees lead by two games over the Red Sox. The Orioles are terrible. They don't even have double-digit wins yet. The Indians are tied with the Twins. They lead by two games over the Tigers. The Mariners lead by four and a half games already over the Athletics. Astros are six behind. Mariners, one of the best teams in baseball, maybe the best team in baseball right now. Athletics and Twins hold the wild card spots. Red Sox and Rangers a half a game out. Rays and Tigers also in the mix there. In the National League, we have the Marlins one game up on the Mets. We have the Cardinals three and a half up on the Pirates, four and a half up on the Reds. And in the West, we have the Padres two up on the Dodgers. Diamondbacks are eight back. I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. Please don't forget to drop a like on it. Again, subscribe if you're new. There's other series, more franchise and dynasty based with storylines. Take care.